So I just want to start out by welcoming everybody to the Leo New Moon Distant Reiki Share. Thank you so much for being here and for all of you who are joining our circle later on through the recordings. You know, you're really a part of the circle. As it is so busy, I do have some one-on-one sessions and readings available for bookings, astrology readings, and Reiki sessions, but not until really like the very end of the month. So if you're thinking about either one of those options, definitely check my calendar and get that booked while there are still some spaces. On August 14th through 16th, I am so excited and so looking forward to a three-day Reiki immersion class in Reiki Master. This is the Reiki Master level in the Holy Fire World Peace Reiki energy, and it's just, oh, it's going to be such a nice time. I'm really looking forward to this, and if you are wanting to, you know, you already have Reiki 1 and 2 and you're ready for your next level of training, definitely you can learn more about the class and see if that's right for you. It's a healing experience for everybody, whether or not you plan to really be a professional practitioner or have any intentions to teach classes, you can take the master class just for your own development and your own healing. And that that is a totally great intention to come to Reiki Master. Likewise, if you do want to teach and be a more full-time practitioner, part-time practitioner, highly recommend the Reiki Master training in whatever lineage or many lineages that you may feel guided to explore if you are guided to explore. So on September 2nd, there will be the Virgo New Moon Distant Reiki Share, and I will put the information about how to join that on my website and create an event shortly, so in the next weeks or so. And I have been teaching Astrology Basics with Reiki classes. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to put together one of those classes this month or if we're going to be having a class in September. So definitely those of you on my email list, you know, you'll hear about it if it is going to be this month, if I'm able to make that happen or if it's just something that is going to wait until September. But there will be a third class and it will be on the astrological houses, the rising signs, the angles, that information. So all of this and more on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. And so today, today is our lovely Leo new moon at 12 degrees, 33 minutes, approximately seven hours ago from the time we are in this distant Reiki share live. So I did a whole video on the new moon. And if you want to explore more of that astrology, definitely check that out. The little mini readings for each sign too. Those are really fun. Later today, so in a few hours, Venus enters Virgo, and we also have the Mercury retrograde beginning also in the sign of Virgo. So Venus entering Virgo, this is like very strong priestess energy and shapeshifter energy as well has been something I've been able to kind of glean from my own personal experience of having Venus in Virgo natally, and then also observing that in others, and then kind of how it plays out in the collective. But Virgo is mutable earth energy. So it's it's changeable earth. It's, it's more fluid, more flexible, more adaptable than the other two earth signs of Taurus and Capricorn. So Venus entering Virgo, that that feels like a very sweet beginning to our Mercury retrograde, as well as the fact that Mercury is stationing retrograde at the time of this new moon, like in this new beginnings kind of energy. It's like 
there are these new beginnings opening and so many different creative possibilities are here. There's that awareness of like the details and the things and like the plan and the logistics. This is very Virgo as well. There's a real feeling also of the support of the earth also. And really this dance with the divine feminine Venus being very, very supportive and all the different kinds of changes in aesthetics, beauty, creativity, creative expression, um, divine feminine energy. So like our relationships in general, relationships with women, feminine beings, our own inner feminine expression all very highlighted here at this time of mercury actually stationing retrograde and then from our perspective on earth appearing to go backwards but of course not really going backwards you know astronomically but from our earth human perspective it's going backwards so the mercury energy that when it's direct it's going forward it's outward retrograde, the energy is going inward and more downward. So it's it's just a different expression. And these are cycles. These are natural cycles that happen about three to four times a year. So it's good to make friends with Mercury retrograde. And in our journey today, we're going to laser focus in on this whole Mercury retrograde and really invite in the higher frequencies of it. So this early part of the lunar cycle, pretty like relaxed in terms of not a lot of big transits initially, like the next 10 days, because we're actually building to some big transits in about 10 days to two weeks. So it's kind of like there's a lot of activity, there's a lot going on kind of um, beneath the surface or even at that day-to-day -day level that's, you know, kind of like get your ducks in a row, like do what you need to do and know that a lot is on the horizon here. And yeah, definitely self-care, self-care, self-care as always. So what is coming next? This is the Mars-Jupiter conjunction, August 14th. And this is occurring in the sign of Gemini. You can see it here in this chart, 16 degrees of Gemini and 40 minutes. So this is where you'll want to see, do you have any planets or points around 16 degrees of Gemini or Virgo, another mutable sign, or Sagittarius and also Pisces. So from around... Oh, say about 13 degrees to 19 degrees of the mutable signs, you could be feeling this energy more viscerally, depending on which planet of your natal chart it may be aspecting. So it's going to be different depending on that. So what is this all about? This is a, a lot Jupiter of active Mars, active like mental energy um, with Gemini. This could be a lot of new information coming in, downloads, insights, but it's not like just things, you know, this, there's going to be possibly a sense of like wanting to enact, like to take action. Um, in in light of new information that you may be coming aware of. And interestingly, this is right when I'm teaching my Reiki masterclass. And I was like, well, that's actually like, and I didn't plan it for this conjunction. That's not something I actually looked at. But, you know, Jupiter is a planet of teaching and knowledge and learning an expansion and with Mars like energizing this it's this could be our own inner desire to teach to learn to expand our mental horizons to expand what we know this could be more communication as well in the sign of Gemini just in general more communication and 
watching any tendencies to want to like communicate too quickly or like abruptly or like be brash about something this could be like a little bit of an impulsive type energy so like taking a moment taking a breath taking pause when needed and also understanding this is like the collective energy so everybody's going to be feeling this kind of like like urgency or um you know, maybe thinking or speaking or kind of like a reactive type of energy that is in the field. So to just remember to breathe and to pause and to ground and maybe take a little a little bit more time. But this could also be, you know, higher frequency expressions like injections of like knowledge and insights and downloads and clarity and a real healing of the inner masculine the divine masculine and ancient knowledge remembrance as well because this degree point here in this chart you can see mars and jupiter are conjunct regal star in orion constellation so this star is very connected to knowledge and learning. Ancient Egypt, it's a protection star, and Jupiter is a protection planet. So in terms of our spiritual protection, it's like really off the charts. And even knowing that, you know, observing the collective or the mainstream or kind of global events that there may be like a larger plan or there is a larger plan that that maybe most people might not be aware of but it is there is this sense of protection and like for the highest good of all um also in the field so like don't freak out about anything that might appear like short term um i think this is really kind of a a trust in in the protection and kind of reaching out and like inviting in that protection of of the light also as well this also feels like a, a very deep time of healing orion star system traumas in general so with this particular conjunction and then the next transit i'm i'm gonna show you on this next slide here so a few days later, you know, we have this like very dynamic Jupiter, Mars, Gemini energy. On the 19th, we have our full moon in Aquarius, and this is at 27 degrees, 14 minutes. So this is a very like community oriented, humanitarian, future oriented, new paradigm full moon so there could be a light of awareness shining about you know how are you engaging in the new paradigm in what ways can you notice and be aware of like the new earth and and heaven on earth and and these types of ideals and visions for yourself your life your community and humanity more broadly speaking and I will do a separate video about the full moon, but it's super like extra potent as just a few hours after this full moon, just, you know, a little over three hours, we have the exact Jupiter square Saturn here. So Jupiter, we were just talking about in the sign of Gemini at 17 degrees, 27 minutes in square to Saturn in Pisces, 17 degrees, 27 minutes. And it's actually making a T square as Venus is in Virgo opposing Saturn. So this is a very, very dynamic configuration where again, do you have any planets or points from around 16 to 20 degrees of the mutable sign? So Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, you may be feeling this more if you're able to know that in your natal chart and be aware of what this configuration might be aspecting for you. 
That said, we are all feeling this collectively, certainly in, you know, global events, political things, all of that, you know, is definitely reflecting that in big ways. So definitely like big changes, surprises, dynamic changes, all of that, very, very possible at this time. And I was actually in a very sacred spot yesterday where I like to go. And it's this beautiful tide pool in Hawaii, which I've become aware of is like situated on Lemurian crystal, like the lava has communicated that to me, that it's like just giant Lemurian crystal lava rock. There are these little flecks of this green stone all throughout it. I'm blanking on the name of that stone. Olvidine, Olvidine, I believe, or Peridot, Peridot, one or the other, um, sprinkled through this beautiful magical rock. And I was aware that it's actually like a dragon in this rock area. And then yesterday when I went, I was like, it's not just one dragon. It's like you could see like layers and layers of dragon within this particular stone. It's a place I visit a lot and just like reveals a lot of secrets to me each time that I go. So it's kind of like a, a place of pilgrimage. And I was reflecting all the astrology. I just put together a first draft of these slides and thinking about Jupiter or Mars, Jupiter, and then Jupiter, Saturn, like, what does this all mean? And this is, you know, this line that I have here was uh, what came through consistently water the seeds of happiness in your heart. And you can be happy right where you are, that that was part of the message of this, you know, Saturn and Pisces, Jupiter and Gemini. And then I didn't even see that Venus was playing in so prominently to this configuration. So it's like a really beautiful, like here and now, there is happiness available, there's contentment available, there is peace available. And it's really that consistent effort over time, Saturn, that we can co-create that for ourselves and then also empower that in the collective moving forward. And just also, you know, I mentioned with the Mars, Jupiter, but then as Saturn comes into this fully, Venus, you know, takes her seat, her place, this time traveler shapeshifter energy already now today, you know, we're two weeks out on this, feels like especially highlighted this real like multidimensional playing across time, you know, visiting past self, like past this lifetime self, you know, communication and guidance and embodiment of like future self, um, connection to other lifetimes on earth, other lifetimes in stars, like all of this feels like very, very available. And with the mutable signs so highlighted that we can we can play with this we can co-create we can mold and shape and sculpt and form formulate with it more of that vision of new earth and that's also playing on very significantly because this is really it's the opening square of what was the Jupiter Saturn conjunction, the great conjunction that occurred in December of 2020. So we're looking at the first what's called hard aspect, 90 degree aspect, 90 degree alignment between these two planets since they were both together and unified at zero degrees of Aquarius starting this whole new era of social growth and development and civilization and kind of setting the stage for the culture of the next couple centuries and that conjunction happening in the sign of Aquarius at zero degrees, this future-oriented, idealistic, humanitarian 
evolutionary, galactically connected zodiac sign of Aquarius that means change, that means, you know, reaching to the stars above, accessing the stars within, connecting to the higher mind, connecting to communities, the tribe, you know, like-minded, like-hearted souls, and really opening up to very expanded mental horizons. So for you as an individual, thinking back to your life, December 2020, kind of some of the the changes you may have been making in 2020 and then moving forward. I mean, that was like an epic year for everybody, right? 2020 and then 2021 certainly was as well. So kind of, you know, time traveling for yourself back to that moment, December 2020 time period and any kind of moment you need to revisit for yourself and kind of send back some Reiki love is what I always like to do. And maybe sometimes there's emotional release, um, but also just appreciation for all the soul growth and like how far you've come, how much progress you've made. Chances are you've evolved quite a lot in, in these last, you know, almost four years. You've had to adapt and change and be flexible and welcome in the new paradigm. And, you know, for all who are gathered here and all who are watching, like being an active co-creator, part of that, that new paradigm, that new earth, that heaven on earth, and in whatever way you're guided to, um, even if that is simply anchoring the frequency and the intention of new earth and a vision for heaven on earth and abundance for all prosperity, for all balance with the planet and amongst humanity, peace amongst humanity and greater awareness of our place within the solar system and then within the galaxy as well. So definitely this is a very like mercury retrograde thing to do also it's like reflect you know take some time and really reflect beautiful use of mercury retrograde to reflect on your own growth and what you've changed and you know are you taking inspired action this could be like a time also of inspired action you know there's been there's this mental reconfiguration being helped or assisted by this Mercury retrograde, by all of this strong Gemini energy and, you know, moving into the the back half of the month, feeling like you're taking more inspired action with that and whatever your next steps for manifesting this reality and living the life that feels really, really authentic for you. This is also making me think of the eclipses earlier this year. So end of March, beginning of April, this Atronar star degree here of Pisces, you know, Pisces 17, this is connected to Atronar, this absolutely beautiful high frequency star in Eridanus constellation. And it was very activated by Mars and Venus during our eclipses. So there may be some kind of resonance with what was going on end of March and then basically the month of April that some of what was closing out and then also being initiated in that time period arising and basically activating whatever was initiated back then for you because the eclipses can sometimes be like very much like acute you know manifesting um more short term and like you know around the time they're actually occurring but they also have this like six month window Oh, the six month orb of influence, like the whole six months, basically until the next set of eclipses where they they are manifesting, they are showing themselves, they're expressing themselves. And this feels like a big, like kind of active um, injection of, of what, whatever 
whatever was coming forward, you know, thinking to end of March and then April, what was occurring in your life then as well, that maybe whatever intentions and seeds you are planting then are actually, you know, coming and being activated more fully. So there's a beautiful kind of connect the dots with the astrology that's always happening. And this is kind of how it's connecting here. And, you know, also speaking about more of this Orion healing, um, healing and memories from our soul's experiences within Orion constellation. We have this beautiful support of the great attractor as well, one of our cosmic points, one of these super massive black holes, you know, of of such force and power and light and creative life force energy. Um, the star at your nar, very connected to the river of life, the river of peace. So there could be quite a lot of letting go still occurring here of any kind of trauma signatures and also inviting in the higher frequencies of the star family, these memories of of Lemuria, the the beings of Atrana are very like elf-like and etheric and just absolutely beautiful. This is also like speaking to what is the song of your soul? What is the song of your life? What is the music of your life like? And music even as a way to connect to these star families and these star lifetimes and these star energies. So definitely invite you to play with that, experiment with that, see what comes through. And there can be quite a lot of healing and support flowing through this dynamic arrangement that again, if if things look like a little crazy out in the more global stage and what's being like drummed up in the media and stuff, just like go within and do what you can and know that these higher expressions are are also very available to us as well. We can choose what we focus on and consistently water the seeds of happiness in our hearts and be happy right where we are. And then I wanted to talk a little bit more about this Mercury retrograde. So building on what I presented at the last Reiki share, that the shadow period began in July, July 16th. And the retrograde, of course, begins today, August 4th. So the shadow period is just referring to Mercury is going forward over area that it's actually going to go backwards over. So we talked about um, Venus and Virgo, but on August 7th, so Mercury conjoins Venus. This is more of that attraction and receiving and possibly reconfiguring relationships and having ideas about creative inspiration, creative directions we may be guided to go, and also reprogramming of self-worth, our value. This is also very strong shapeshifter energy as Mercury is very mercurial. It's shapeshifting Venus as well, Venus and Virgo, really holding down this mutability of reality and form, you know, including the body, but also including like physical reality. So could be quite fun to play with. August 14th, Mercury leaves Virgo and reenters the sign of Leo. And on August 17th, 18th, this is a period to kind of circle on the calendar. Um, being and and interesting, like this is leading into that full moon. This is also leading into the Jupiter square Saturn, that T square we were just talking about with Venus. And this could be like big ideas, insights, downloads with Mercury square, Uranus, future orient, galactic contact, star family, like seeing the UFOs. I mean, this could be like really fun or like feeling more connected 
to star family and the galactic from within, but also thinking about uh, innovative ways of being and thinking and communicating on earth with physical reality with the, the human body as well as Uranus will be in the sign of Taurus. Uranus is in the sign of Taurus and will be so for a little while longer here. Um, so that's the 17th and the 18th also in that kind of mental brilliance, like reconfiguration, reprogramming of the mind, but also this could be insights, clarity, breakthroughs. Um, this is having, I mean, when we're talking about shapeshifter energy here, this is feeling more like magician energy, uh, Mercury square Uranus, and then sun conjunct uh, Mercury here in the sign of Leo. And, and that's even happening on a conjunct, a star called Alphard star in Hydra constellation, which has so much secret, esoteric wisdom, awareness of kundalini energy, spiritual enlightenment, um, working with divine feminine, divine masculine energy, working with like the nadis and the channels in the body, an activation of the clear senses. I mean, this is a very, very powerful star that we are super blessed that Mercury is activating this star. So it already activated this star once, and then we'll retrograde back over the star Alphard, and then we'll be going direct over this star Alphard again. But conjoining the star, um, conjoining Sun, our star, um, conjunct Alphard star, this is a good opportunity to actually connect with the Alphard star, which can be more of a secretive, mysterious star and come to understand it more. And I'm really excited for this because I have this star prominent in my chart. And I know there's a lot of kind of mystery surrounding it because it is an extremely powerful, deep, transformative star. And so I, th I think we could really be understanding more of it. So definitely be listening. <laughs> uh, August 17th, 18th, that's, that falls on a weekend, like I said, just prior to these big transits. So it's almost like this kind of like preparedness, like getting prepared even for, um, you know, that that next August 19th of just so much dynamic energy. This is such an incredible month on so many levels. So the 23rd Mercury trine Chiron, Mercury sextile Mars. This is also very supportive healing, mental healing energy, and also kind of like our mind and our bodies. Like I'm thinking Mercury sextile Mars, like we're we're thinking, we're behaving, we're acting with a sense of integrity and cohesion and also like linking how our mental manifestation is is working as well, like thoughts becoming things. This, this feels very highlight. We may have a better grasp of like how that works and how we can skillfully um, do that with all of these big activations and upgrades. So August 28th, the retrograde ends and Mercury will station direct at 21, 24 degrees of Leo, and it will clear its shadow period on September 11th at four degrees, six minutes of Virgo. So September 11th onward, Mercury will be covering new territory. So really we're in this like incubation chamber right now from now until September 11th, where there's a real emphasis on this part of your chart. And that's, that is what I covered in the mini readings for this Leo new moon. So you can go back and watch that video and find out which houses in your astrological chart, this Mercury retrograde is activating. In terms of the stars, I mentioned Alphard star and Hydra, 
but Mercury today is stationing retrograde con or opposite Royal Star FOMO out connected to Archangel Gabriel. This is a star of enchantment and divine messages and downloads and insights and soul song and so much beauty, such powerful frequencies. It will also be making two more conjunctions with Royal Star, regulus, very magical, creative, powerful, successful star here in the heart of the lion. Omaha is in the mouth of the fish, receiving the waters of Aquarius. Regulus is in the heart of Leo the lion. And then we have another heart star here. Uh, Mercury making two more activations of this Alphard star in Hydra, and Alphard is the heart of the serpent Hydra. So there's so much heart energy, especially as Mercury is in the sign of the heart uh, Leo. So beginning um, August 14th when it is retrograding back through Leo. So adding more heart energy to this already heart-centered Leo season. Yeah, that's that's a little bit. I know that was that was that was a little bit. That's, you know, some of what's going on. There's so much. I could be on on the stock in for 3 hours, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to restrain myself here. That, my friends, is Jupiter and Gemini. So much to say, so much to communicate. I want to tell you everything. You guys probably want to know everything too. So powerful month ahead. Yes. So at this point, we will transition into our Reiki journey. And so I invite each of you, you can turn your video off if you want to. You can lay down, you can be seated, however you want to be very comfortable, just receptive to receive Reiki and I'm not going to play any music. So if you want to play music, you can do that. I don't know if we're going to do automatic writing or not <laughs> because this journey will be channeled. So if you have a device or, you know, paper handy and you want to write or draw anything at any point during the journey, you just do it, whether I cue it or not. And if the journey takes you someplace that is, you know, maybe different than what I'm saying, you just follow your journey and have your experience and yeah, trust wherever it leads you. So close your eyes and take some deep breaths. Turn your awareness inward. Notice your heart beating in your body your breath breathing in your body, your beautiful human body filled with the light of Reiki. The light of Reiki flows from the highest heavens of consciousness. And it flows from the depth and the heart of the earth. Enveloping you in an orb of pure light. Enveloping your auric field. And flowing through and circulating in the space where you are physically. Your room, your home, your land. The air and the sky above you the plants, the trees, your animal companions if they're open and wish to receive, and flowing through the mycelium underneath, your home, your land, the ground and the ground waters, the earth and the soil, all filled with the light all parts of you filled with the light of Reiki from your fingers and toes to the crown of your head your heart, your breath, your cells and organs and tissues 
fascia, tendons, ligaments, all the cells and atoms and tiniest parts of you filled with the light of Reiki. And the waveform of you, your biofield all filled with Reiki. The power of love, the light and the power of the divine mind, the light and the power of the pure heart all activate and awaken within you from the microcosmic scale to the macrocosmic scale, all of you awaken. Your wholeness awakened and revealed. As the light of the earth rises beneath you and communes and connects and interfaces with your heart light, with your DNA, with your genetics and epigenetics, bringing in the higher frequency activations of your body, your health and well-being and vitality awaken, your radiance awaken, your vibrancy your inner nature, your inner true nature, the truth of who you are, freely expressing through your heart and your throat, freely expressing through each of your chakras, your root chakra and sacral chakra, your solar plexus chakra, all balanced receiving the colors of the earth and the colors of creation, red and orange and yellow, all the gradient shades in between. Your heart chakra balance, the color green, enriched and concentrated, unconditional love, having a place to land, having a place to activate within your heart and flowing powerfully through your lower chakras, through your hips and legs and out your feet, transmitting into the earth, communicating with the earth your intention for new earth, for heaven on earth, to walk in alignment with the purity of your heart, your soul, your spirit, the fullness of your wholeness accessible to you through your actions, through your thinking, through your emotional body. The light of the holy fire, the light of creation awakening within your earth star chakra below your feet, enveloping your lower chakras, your meridians and nadis carrying the holy fire throughout your physical body. the double helix spiral of you flowing through the toroidal field of your biofield. And the toroidal fields of each of your chakras moving through your heart and throat, a color blue moving through your third eye indigo, your crown, violet, your soul star chakra, enveloped in the holy fire, enveloped 
in the flower of healing, awakening your full soul consciousness, full soul consciousness, full soul consciousness, remembering who you are, why you're here, your divine gifts, the elements of the earth and the elements of creation rise to meet you. The ether and air, fire, the water, the earth, activating within you and around you. All manifestations of the Reiki light in form. Clearing and transmuting, healing all the way back to the original cause. Any traumas that are ready to be let go, any blockages, any obscurations to your full awareness of how absolutely incredible you are how gifted and talented you are and what a blessing and treasure you are to humanity, to the earth, to your life, to this solar system and to this galaxy. And anything out of resonance with the truth of you simply lifts into the light carried by the elements it's carried by the enlightened beings all around you supporting you shining their light into your light awakening your light awakening each of your colors magenta silver gold the metallic tones the jewel tones precious gem tones Precious metal tones, the sparkling light, sparkling luminescence, photonic light and cosmic light, galactic, multiversal, universal light. So your higher chakras awaken and receive more of this light more of this easeful transmutation of anything that no longer serves your highest good. It's not your problem anymore. It's not yours to carry. Simply lifts into the light. And you and your wholeness and your fullness and your vitality and your luminescence are invited to cross over a very, very beautiful bridge of light filled with all of the colors, so many colors, so many spiritual beings of the light, the enlightened beings. So you walk over this bridge and you walk through the frequencies of Karuna Reiki. Zonar, Halu, Hearth, Rama, Nosa, Iava, Shanti, Kriya, you awaken and walk into the third heaven of consciousness, all there is is love. All there is, is enlightened magic, enlightened beings. You are fully safe here, safe to be you, safe to let go, safe to abide in the resonance of your spirit, 
your light body, the beautiful beings of the light are here, the river of life, the river of peace, the tree of life, field of all possibilities with thousands of beautiful, colorful flowers. You gaze up into the sky and the sun and the moon are there. The light of thousands of stars and the light of the planets, Mercury and Venus, Mars, Jupiter, you can even see the asteroids, Saturn, the outer planets too, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, the centaurs, the dwarf planets, you can see it all. Your vision is activated. And today, Mercury is inviting you to take an adventure, to take an adventure into the cosmos. To experience the one consciousness, the singularity, your multidimensional self, your connection to it all. And so this enlightened expression of Mercury, along with your guides and you enveloped in this orb of pure light, pristine energy, safety, clarity, you rise into the higher heavens of consciousness and Mercury guides you to the constellation Piscis Austrinus, where there's this beautiful star, royal star, Fomohau. Archangel Gabriel is here and many other beautiful beings of the light, beautiful planets, this incredible star system of peace and unification consciousness and the music, the sound you open, your heart and your senses, your higher senses to receive this song. So take a moment now and receive the song, the blessing, and the higher frequencies of FOMOHO. What divine message does Royal Star FOMO have for you? You may write this down or draw it or simply be open to receive.
opening your mind to receive more insights, downloads, and clarity, more ease and flow from FOMO Health over the course of the next six weeks. Mercury guides you now in the direction of another royal star, royal star Regulus, in the heart of the lion, Leo constellation, the light of the stars, extraordinary, awakening the intelligence of your heart, your heart light, the magic of your soul and spirit, and your awareness that magic is real, and you are magical, and you have the right, the birthright, to live an incredibly magical life of light and love, creativity, thriving vitality, joy, and radiance. So take some moments now to be in the light of Regulus Star, the beautiful beings of the light here, the Archangel, Raphael present, and many others. Such deep healing available here, the activation of your own innate healing gifts in each of their expressions, each of their unique and authentic forms, your healing gifts as they present, the activation of you as healer being of the light. So open your heart and receive this light of Regulus. Mercury guides you now along this stream of heart magic, assuring you that magical manifestations are available to you throughout this next six weeks of Mercury cycle. Mercury guides you now into the heart of the serpent, the heart of Hydra constellation, this most mysterious and powerful star, Alphard, unlocking the wisdom of this star, the intelligence of your heart, the power of your heart, 
the love and wisdom and brilliance of your heart. Your heart's knowingness of your multidimensionality. Your ability to consciously be aware of and navigate life on earth as a human with the awareness of your multidimensionality and what that means for you, what that looks like, and how you can understand it in a way that resonates and is coherent for you. So open your heart and receive this deep soul remembrance. For your ability to travel interdimensionally, to connect and commune with all apparently distinct times and places in the here and now. And to remain grounded and skillful and intentional while doing so. Receive the gifts, the magic, the power of love of Alfard Star. Take a moment now listening, listening for an intention for this Leo moon cycle, for this Mercury retrograde period, listening for what's best for you to intend and put forward and manifest and create. It can be a word or a phrase or a sentence or a paragraph or a symbol. Allow your wisdom to flow through you and trust what you receive.
And Mercury begins guiding you back, back across the length of Hydra and Leo and Piscis Austrenus and all the beautiful stars that Mercury will be sharing with you in the next six weeks in this particular cycle, inviting you to listen to the secrets, unlock the infinite wisdom, the blessings, the miracles, the magic, the possibilities, the opportunities and many higher frequency expressions of this period for your highest good and the highest good of all. And Mercury is supporting you, the divine being of Mercury, the divine being of these three stars and many more, the divine being of our star, the sun, the divine being of the earth, and the countless angels and archangels and enlightened star beings that work with you and other enlightened beings working with you, helping you, protecting you, assisting you, guiding you, loving you, unconditionally playing the music of your soul and your spirit and your life all around you always helping you remember supporting you as you change and grow and transform as you talk your talk and walk your walk and be you more fully, more completely self-expressed, more in integrity every day, every moment, every breath, every heartbeat. And so Mercury guides you back through the heavens of consciousness to the third heaven, where you ground down and your orb of pure light dissolves. Your feet make contact with the ground of the third heaven, the ground of the earth, and you are supported and blessed as you cross back over the bridge of light and re-enter the first heaven of earth with so much support for this moon cycle ahead and this entire Mercury cycle. So begin bringing your awareness to your body, the space around your body and where your body connects with the earth, bringing awareness to your heart, your breath, and say thank you to you for being open to receive. Thank you to you for unlocking the magic of your soul and spirit, for co-creating with the stars and the planets and the earth, the elements and the nature all around you and within you, your true nature expressed. We say thank you to each other for our divinely ordered circle all who are gathered together live, all who are listening later, we are soul family. We are a circle of unconditional pure love coming together, empowering the higher frequencies for all life on earth and beyond. For we are committed to peace on earth and cosmic peace, well-being and thriving, enrichment for all, love for all, that is. We say thank you to all that supports us. Please continue blessing us and 
the most magical, synchronistic, incredible ways. We invite you to be with us and guide us even when we forget to ask. To lead us into more of our truth, more of our power, more of our remembrance, more of our joy and playfulness and lightheartedness too, to more smiles, more laughter, more ease and grace. Thank you. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo. And so as you're ready, you may bring your awareness back to your eyes and slowly return 